wrapped in. There's no going back now. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, man. We're good to go in three, two, one. Yep, that's me. And that's a hologram fan that's about to spin violently at 11 rotations per second. You might be wondering how I got here. Well, it all started when I laid my eyes upon the coolest shield I've ever seen in a Zelda game, the Mighty Zonite Shield. A shield that glistens gold. A shield that projects a cool hologram on the outside. A shield that's designed to improve any Zonite device that you attach to it. So I had to ask myself, how close to the game could I make this in real life? And I know what a couple of you are already thinking. Didn't the Hacksmith crew make this like a couple weeks ago? Aren't you stepping on their toes? Well, funnily enough, I actually met the founders of the Hacksmith back in July and told them I was making this. And coincidentally, they told me they were also making a Mighty Zonite Shield. But I also learned that we were approaching this project from pretty different angles. As for stepping on their toes, I did actually literally step on Ian's foot right after taking these photos. But again, I knew these projects were going to differ because I had three main goals. The first goal was to make it as game accurate as possible. From the dimensions, to the hologram animation, to the dangly bits, I wanted to recreate as many details as possible. Second, I wanted to make this replicable. All I have are some 3D printers and a limited budget. So I needed this to be something that is plastic and possible for someone who doesn't own a makerspace warehouse. And finally, I wanted to test this as an actual shield. In Tears of the Kingdom, this shield is capable of doing some massive damage to enemies when you attach things to it. But I wanted to see if it could actually protect someone against attacks as a shield. So yeah, we're gonna throw some of that in. But if you want to see cool Zonai attachments, the Hacksmith video has you covered. So go watch it. Uh, after this video, of course. So how do we even get started? Well, to make this as close to the game as possible, why don't we just go to the source itself? After ripping my physical copy of the game, I used a tool to extract the models from the game. Thank you, Watertune, for your hard work on this one. Now, here in Blender, we're left with a smooth-looking model. What happened to all the intricate designs? Well, to explain that, I'm going to give you a short lesson on how game designers create 3D models for games. Wait, hey, get back here! It, it's not that complicated. I, I can explain it like a, um, like a sandwich. You like sandwiches, right? Okay, cool. Let's take the model and its 2D JPEG texture as our two slices of bread. Now, this could be our sandwich, but it's not super appealing. So developers use a bunch of ingredients and math to make it look like a model is a lot more detailed than it actually is. And using all of these tricks is a lot cheaper than using extra polygons. And now when we put the sandwich together in the game engine, we get this beautiful shield. But how do we add these details back into the model so it can be 3D printed in the real world? Thankfully, there's an online tool that lets you take this normal mapping and reapply it back to the model. It's not perfect, but with some finagling, we get a good 3D representation of depth here. Speaking of mapping, there's this unused file for all the circuit-looking lines that's supposed to make it glow, similar to when Monero's mech is powering on for the first time. It seems to have been cut from the final release, but I went ahead and painstakingly traced and carved out the design because I had an idea, and I'll get to that soon. But for now, this thing is way too big to be printed all at once, so I karate chopped it into pieces and printed it over the course of a few days. For the dangly crystal bits, the only way I could make something with a translucent, glassy look was to use resin. Unfortunately, I don't have a resin printer because the whole process takes a lot of space. You have to have a curing station for when the print finishes, and it requires additional equipment to prevent the air you breathe from being toxic. And what would happen if I took up any more space in the shared apartment I currently occupy? We'd kick you out immediately. Exactly. Thankfully, I have a Harry. I'm Harry. Who printed me these beautiful crystals that have finished with some green alcohol ink. And if I didn't have a Harry, well, then I would turn to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is often known for their services for providing circuit boards for prototyping and projects. But did you know that they also offer top-of-the-line 3D printing services as well? All you need to do is upload your 3D model, select the material you need, and they'll give you a quote lickety split. We're talking PLA plastic, resin, and even some metals? How do they even do that? 
If you're a new customer, they will even cover the cost of your first 10 PCBs. Don't have any ideas for a PCB project? Well, the PCB Way community has you covered with hundreds of projects that you can recreate yourself. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description to make your ideas a reality. Now that I have these crystals, I need a way to attach them. So with this gold TPU, I have some loops that can bend and attach to the bottom of the shield. And they snap back in place with the help of some magnets, because it wouldn't be a big rig project if magnetism wasn't involved. Now just a few jewelry loops hooked together, and we're good to go. Now that everything is all laid out, it kind of feels like I have a bunch of ancient puzzle pieces. It's like I have all the parts of Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh! And trust me, this thing will absolutely obliterate when the build is done. After gluing everything together, I weave some electric luminescent wire through all the circuit traces, and with the press of a button, this shield now has a cool, Tron-like glow to it. Speaking about making it glow, I think it's about time to move on to the hologram animation. I started by stitching together all the pieces from the game, and with a few color effects, I got pretty lucky and I think I nailed how it looks in the game. Now we'll bring it into After Effects and apply some distortion to each piece, and we are really cooking now. Now for the hologram fan, it's going to be similar to my Spiritomb project, but double the size. And with a bigger fan comes a bigger price. Yeah, okay, I think that this is where the Patreon plug should go. Not only is this thing expensive, it's also really scary. The velocity at which this thing moves terrifies me. In fact, the first time I plugged it in, it wasn't secured, and it moved so violently that one of the blades flew off and hit me in the ankle. Yeah, I'm not exactly excited to be holding this thing. But with this attachment I made, everything should, in theory, hold together. But at one point or another, I'm gonna have to test it. Uh, from a distance, of course. Oh, that's scary. Oh, I gotta stand away. That is so fast. Oh, that's cool. That thing is cooking, too. <laughs> I know, isn't it scary? That thing probably chopped you up like, like meat, right? Well, I think we're going to test out the destructive power of this thing pretty soon. Oh. Here comes the pickle. This is what happens if you touch this thing. Well, it gets unplugged. <laughs> so here I am wearing a Link costume that definitely wasn't too small for me. But I'm here on a mission to test this thing out as an actual shield. Uh, time to actually do this. I'm super nervous about this. It's so scary. It's gonna blow my brains off, I swear. We're good to go in three, two, one. How does it look? It looks great. <laughs> okay, it's working, it's working. Good. Oh, it's so unbelievably scary to hold. So, uh, let's throw some stuff at it. Let's see how well this works as an actual shield. <laughs> Again. Oh yeah, it sliced right through it. Oh, that one actually hit me. <laughs> went right through. That's impressive. <laughs> ah, that one got me so wet. All right. Uh, Let's try uh, moving on to something a little more challenging. We got a couple tomatoes. Let's do it. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow! All right. Do it again. Oh, it's meaty. Uh oh, is the pants still good? Looks good. It sounds weird. Let's see if we can get some uh, actual projectiles going on here. I swear, this thing is still so scary. Ooh! <laughs> Man, if I could have a shot of how far that went down, that's practically in the neighbor's yard. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> That was sick. That went up into the tree. I'm not even kidding. 
Let's see if we can hit a home run. Legend of Zelda Baseball. Foul oh, ball. You can't win them all. Yeah, let's see how this actually stacks up to a weapon. All right, Harry, bring out the bow and arrow. This one I'm the most nervous about. You got this. Fire away. The shield did break, but <laughs> it's still as you holding can see, strong. It's not holding strong. Oh no. It did snap. <laughs> that's that's the power of super glue, folks. It can only do so much. Uh, I'll hold in place one more, but uh, let's give it one more try. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was great. Kill it, please kill it. I I, I do not want to hold this anymore. <laughs> Well, as you can see, uh, it didn't exactly make it in one piece. <laughs> we got the dangly bit here and here, and it's completely covered in watermelon and tomato paste. Like, wow, that was a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I can put it all back together again, you know? So yeah, as a shield, it okay. ended up shattering. But given how the new Zelda games work, I'm choosing to call that accurate to the games. And while I was able to put everything back together again, the fan suffered some irreversible damage. Man, this was an expensive test. Special thanks to my executive level patrons, Jameson Zabalos, Marco Carini, Evan Timmerman, Brendan Wolf, Pow Pow, Joe S, Zebra Mang, and finally, Sally and Dave.